Hello everyone. Today I will show you how to configure Cisco routers for syslog, NTP, and SSH operations. In this lab we will configure OSPF MD5 authentication, NTP, configure routers to log messages to the syslog server, and configure router 3 to support SSH connections. This is our topology. We have three router to configure, to use services from two server NTP and syslog and we'll configure router 3 to become SSH server. Now, part 1, we will configure OSPF MD5 authentication. Step 1, test connectivity. All devices should be able to ping all other IP addresses. As you see, all devices are able to ping each other. Step 2. Configure OSPF MD5 authentication for all the routers in Area 0. We have password for this but we don't really need to type it, just go to Config tab, click on any interface, and back to CLI tab. That is easier. This step is easy, just type exactly same as sample configuration, I'll do it fast on all three routers. Step 3, configure the MD5 key for all the routers in Area 0. We just do it like a sample configuration, on all three routers. OK, now we will use the command show IP OSPF interface to verify the MD5 authentication configurations. As you see, it is router 1's interface serial 000. And the message digest authentication is enabled, same as other routers. Now we will verify end-to-end -end connectivity. All the ping packets still successful. Part 2, Configure NTP. Network Time Protocol, NTP, is a protocol that is used to synchronize computer clock times in a network of computers.
First, we will enable NTP service on the server and enable authentication use key and password for authentication. Step 2, configure router 1, router 2, and router 3 as NTP clients. We use command show NTP status to verify the configuration of the router is not configured. And step 3, configure all three routers to periodically update the hardware clock with the time learned from NTP. We use the command show clock before and after configure to verify that the hardware clock was updated. Step 4, Configure NTP Authentication on the Routers. There are sample configuration, let's type it on all three routers. Step 5, Configure Routers to Timestamp Log Messages. We use Command Service, Timestamps, Log, Datetime, msec to do that. Part 3, Configure Routers to Log Messages to the Syslog Server. Step 1, Configure the routers to identify the Syslog Server that will receive logging messages. We use Command Logging Host to identify Syslog Server. Retype it on all routers. And then, use the command show logging to verify logging has been enabled.
Now we will check the syslog server. We will generate new logs by shutdown in interface and turn it on. It's work. The syslog server is received logs from routers. Part 4. Configure Router 3 to support SSH connections. First, we need to configure a domain name of ccnasecurity.com on Router 3. Now, configure users for login to the SSH server on router 3 same as sample configuration. And then, Configure the incoming VTY lines on router 3 use the local user accounts, and accept SSH only. The router uses the RSA key pair for authentication and encryption of transmitted SSH data. So we configure the RSA keys with the modulus of 1024. The default SSH timeouts and authentication parameters can be altered to be more restrictive. Set the timeout to 90 seconds, the number of authentication retries to 2, and the version to 2. Now we will try to telnet to router 3. This connection should fail because router 3 has been configured to accept only SSH connections on the virtual terminal lines. And if we enter the command to connect to router 3 via SSH, it should be success.
We can access router 3 from router 2 via SSH also. That's it. We done it with 100%. Good luck. And thank you for watching.